Hi, welcome to Thanks Academy, the po- podcast where we watch all the best picture winners of all time in random order with random friends. And today's random friend is Pat Dean. Hello, everyone. Oh my God, Pat Dean. Now I'm your friend, <laughs> listeners. There's only one listener. You're supposed to just talk to one listener. Listener, because, I, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, radio is an intimate medium. It is. And you're supposed to forge a connection with the one person. They freak out if there's someone else in the car, like in the back seat. All right, look, I, I didn't mean to do that. Just yeah. block all that out. I'm just talking to you. Okay, cool. There's no one else You just around. have Pat Dean in the back seat. <sighs> I wouldn't wish that on anyone. <laughs> you imagine you're driving, and you just look up, and you're just like, hello. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> you got so bald so quick in life. What lame direct-to-video version of The Hitcher is this? <laughs> uh, today we're going to watch On the Waterfront. I'm excited. Are you? Well, because... What I, is it? Okay. the I think... Okay. This is the movie where the guy goes, I could have been a contender. Except oh. for what I am now. Oh, cool. Okay. And what's funny is that my dad used to always say that. Yeah. Not meaning like... He wasn't saying, like, oh, I could have been a contender. He would just quote that all the time. He, would, he made him happy to say it. He made him really happy to say it, yeah. He it's quotes like a lot of stuff. It's like my wife, but for, like, old guys. Yeah, for old guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a Borat for, for older gentlemen. Okay. So uh, that's the only thing I know about it. I thought this was on Golden Pond. So when I... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, when I... I don't know why I had the two confused in my head, so I was really excited we got this movie. I was like, yeah, let's watch some Jane Fonda, some Henry Fonda, some that's Catherine so Hepburn. funny. Let's watch some romance with Pat Dean. And I went to download it, and then there was Marlon Brando in yeah. black and white, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck this movie is at all. I have no- that. I cannot believe you thought it was on Golden Pond. I totally thought on Golden Pond one. Of, of course, I thought it was Catherine Hepburn and Henry Fonda. Of course, it was in the fifties, not the eighties or whatever it actually was. When I was in college, uh, I took a, a course on medieval literature, and we had to read Beowulf, oh, and God. I didn't want to read it, so I just didn't read it. Okay, and. Um, I graduated with a degree in English, by the way, but just didn't read Beowulf. Well, Beowulf was written in old English. Yeah, it's for, it's you optional. Know, yeah, it's for old-fashioned people. But I, I remember, I literally thought, I'm not trying to be funny, I thought it was about a werewolf. Okay. I thought about a wolf creature, because it's called Beowulf. And in my head, I was like, all right, if they just call on me, I'll just bullshit something about how cool it is to see a werewolf in, in literature. And I'm so glad they never called on me, because I would have, I think they would have, they would have expelled me. That is... Actually, cooler than what it's actually about. Somehow, even yeah, it's about dragons, monsters, and, monsters and stuff. Yeah, but it would have been dragons, and somehow Angelina Jolie is in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Neil Gaiman, I think, wrote that script. Is that weird? Um, was it adapted from one of his like seven no, projects a year that he? No, does? yeah, really. No, it, it, it was. It was. I think it was written by him and the guy who co-wrote Pulp Fiction. Roger something. Somebody co-wrote Paul Fi- Pulp There's Fiction? A, yeah, well, he, he wrote the... Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Pulp Fiction. Um, the one before it, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 Tarantino's been hiding that super well. Very well. <laughs> yeah, no, so I think it was like written by like two like obviously very talented writers, but I don't I don't think it got very good reviews. No, because the story of... Did that win an Oscar? No, it did not. Son of a bitch. No, Angelina Jolie, I believe... No, she won an Oscar for uh, Girl Interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say she's still waiting for her Oscar, but I think she got it out of the way nice and early. So That's always good. good for her. Yeah. I, I, I did the same thing. Did you? What'd yeah. you get it for? I just want to, just for being cool. Oh, one of the tech See, earlier you said an acting Oscar. Yeah. But it's not really what I do. I don't act. I'm just a really cool guy. Yeah. So. That's the best boy, right? I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> I always loved at in, uh, the movie Airplane yeah. in the credits. They said best boy and the person's name, and then underneath it, worst boy, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I always laugh. It's such a dumb little joke. But... Oh, they don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't. And when they do, it's stuff like... Um, Scary movies. Yeah, and like the, the parody movies and stuff like oh, that. Which sucks. Yeah. Fucking suck. We should, we, we, should, uh, we should revive that. Make an Oscar category for it so people actually like try hard. Best parody? Best parody movie. Can you imagine having to say... And the Academy Award for Best Parody goes to... It'd be a porn movie every year. Yeah, there's like <laughs> two dudes who make all these parodies, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know their names, but they're these two mysterious gentlemen. Yeah, they've been doing all of them since 2000, I think. But to me, they're no gentlemen. They are not. They make horrible movies. What do you know about this movie? Nothing. I'm glad just, we had something else to talk about. I, I know Marlon Brando's in it. Yeah. Um, 
I've only seen two Marlon Brando movies ever. Really? I've seen Rebel Without a Cause, mm -hmm. where he's a motorcycle gentleman without a cause. No, not Rebel. Yeah, Wait, did you say a... Rebel Without a Cause? Isn't that no? It's that's James, James Dean. Dean. What's yeah. the one where Marlon Brando is a, a motorcycle? The Godfather. Chap? No, haven't seen The Godfather. He's a motorcycle guy, and he goes around and he terrorizes people. A but motorcycle it's about him guy. I don't know. In the fifties. Oh boy, people are screaming. I don't know why. Yeah, any movie, any actual movie buff wants to murder us both right now. I know that's how this podcast works. It's like really a good showcase for my ignorance. Anyway, some famous nineteen fifties movie where he plays a motorcycle. I'm sure cycle. it's real. Me too. I, I believe you. I'm and then the island of Doctor Moreau, which is also unfortunately real with Val Kilmer. Well, I, okay. So what's interesting about that is that I never, um, I never actually saw that, but I read. An article about a documentary they made based yes. on like how much of a disaster it was to film. The apparently. documentary is also amazing. Both movies are worth okay. watching. I, I haven't seen. I read about it and I was like, oh, this sounds. Oh, it's so good. I also I, I rewatched Boondock Saints two nights ago. Okay. Uh, and I watched it when I was like fifteen, and I loved it. And oh, yeah. it's I a still fifteen-year-old movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still love it, but for totally different reasons. Okay. Because it's horrible. <laughs> I have a very soft spot for horrible movies. Oh yeah, me too. I love them. My roommate used to work at uh, Vulcan Video, and she would just bring home. People would walk in and yeah. be like, "Hey, can you re rent the movie I made?" This guy came in. He said his name was the Prospector, and he. Was dropping off on behalf of someone else a film. Well, because he's the prospector. It was I don't know. It was, he's the, not the filmmaker. No, he's a prospector, right? And he like, kind of like was dressed old timey kind. I think, and <laughs> if I remember correctly, and the person working there was just like apparently was just went okay, like yeah, sure, but we'll rent this. But like later on, her roommate was like, why, why didn't you ask them what why? your deal is? Yes, it's called Song of the Blind Girl. Yes. And we do not have enough time to get into it. <laughs> it is, it's the most baffling thing I've ever seen. Oh my God. I'm my seriously, because I'm more of a bad movie buff too. That's where my, my entire movie education comes from watching the worst shit I can find. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I love in horror movies, which yeah. generally there's a good Venn diagram overlap there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, a good horror movie is my favorite thing in the world. I never watch horror movies. And though. horror movies never win Best Picture. I get, ever. I get too scared. Never once. People complain about comedies. I've watched three comedies so far for this podcast. There mm -hmm. will not be a horror movie in this list. What comedies won? Um, no, they're all romantic comedies from oh, okay. the 30s. But still, it's happened. Okay. But I don't think a horror movie is ever... Oh, wait, The Exorcist. Yeah, The Exorcist. Um, I think, I think <laughs> that there my are ignorance. now... I think now people are finally like, oh, yeah, like we can all just appreciate a good horror movie. So I, yes. I think in the next five years, you'll probably see a horror movie. Oh, my God. They've been so good for the last three years. You're like, like a horror movie buff. Yeah. I, I, I had no idea. Oh, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm all serious. I would watch when I was younger. I hate them. I, I, I get too scared. <laughs> well, hopefully this won't be a horror movie. How funny would it be? That if, would be awesome. But what was so funny is... What if it was about a werewolf? Then I'm doing backflips the whole time. I love werewolves. I love reading horror. I hate being scared like that. I oh, hate that shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember recently um, we went to go see uh, Master Pancake. Uh, I think you were there. Yes. And, and, we, and yeah, well, of course you were there. And they fucking... You guys picked signs. And yes. I was like... Yeah. Oh, it's a horror movie. And I was like, oh, but I've seen this before. It's not scary. It's a horrible movie. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's it's so funny how bad it is. Yes. And it was just so funny because I, I recently rewatched... I don't like horror movies, but for some reason I saw The Sixth Sense when I was a young man. Yeah. And I rewatched it about a year ago, and I will say, I will say that movie holds the fuck up. It yes. really does. That is a good movie. Um, even when you know what's coming, it's a good yeah. movie. Well, do, okay. Well, sorry, <laughs> Marlon Brando. Do uh, you, who cares? Do you, do you have any thoughts, feelings? Have no, you seen the any of his movies? No, it doesn't have to be on the waterfront. Like Marlon Brando in general. Marlon what's your Brando. I know more about him as like the larger than life actor yeah. than I do his actual work. Right. So I I know him as this this legendary method actor who like kind of just kind of destroyed himself a little bit 
went insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then kind of just started doing roles for the money. Like I, I, I remember like and then the, the articles again. I, I, I would, I would read these articles about him where in the Superman movie he's they had to hold the lines up on pieces of paper for him to read. He just refused to learn lines, which I actually kind of like a little bit. I do too. I, I forgot he was in Superman. That's another Marlon Brando movie on my list. It's yeah. so funny that, like, the older I get and, and the longer I'm a performer, the more I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, get your fucking money for the <laughs> least amount of work. Fuck yes. those guys. So I kind of like that he got, he got, I think, like $2 million or something absurd yes. for, like, pretty much three scenes. And he didn't even bother to learn his lines, and that rules. And the lines weren't that hard. No! It wasn't like a Shakespearean soliloquy. Right. Hey, yeah. Superman, here's a crystal. Have fun. I think that's I love what you. it was. Yeah. I yeah. love you. I'm your dad. And I then he said I love you. No, he definitely didn't. They didn't do that in the 80s. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> and then um, uh, he was in this movie called, I believe, The Score, with Robert De Niro and Edward Norton. Ooh, God, that's three really, really opinionated people. Yep. And um, wow. I don't... I remember thinking it was kind of cool, but I, I saw it when I was like 17. I don't remember anything about it. Right. It was a crime movie, I think. But he wasn't in for very long. So I, I, I know him more as like this legendary guy who everyone said he was the guy. He was yeah. the best actor that all all the guys wanted to, wanted to be him and, and, and all this stuff. And then he kind of just was like, I... I did it. I did it. And, and I've just decided to devote my life to, like, eating food and having sex. Yeah. Which, like, okay. Hang Jack on. Nicholson kind of did that, except he kept acting. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't really act that much these days. I think he's kind of in... Well, he's really old now. Very old, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he can really move as well. Really? Oh, I yeah, know yeah. I think he's, like, I don't know. I, if some, for some reason, I don't even think he's going to Lakers games anymore. Really? Uh, well, that's how you know. Yeah. That's that's exactly how. That's you know. how you know. That's the first thing to go. <laughs> <laughs> the courtside Lakers seats. <laughs> I could be wrong on that. I don't really care about basketball. But. So I yeah I, I don't think I really know much as an actor to be honest. With you. So I, this could be a treat for both of us. Which is kind of surprising yeah. because when you were like yeah I've never really seen a movie with him in my head I'm like come on Karina what's wrong with you but then like as I'm going yeah. oh wait I fucking never have either. I've seen the documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now. But I've never actually watched Apocalypse Now. I know the whole thing with him going crazy. It's one of those things with pop there. culture where you just sort of, through osmosis, you know yeah. what happens in, in his major films and the references, the cultural references, things like that. But you never actually experience, which that that's always weird to me. All right, let's have an experience. Let's do it. All right, cool. Classic. Yes, yeah, it's just classic text. Carl, Ma- oh, I thought that said Carl Maiden. <laughs> you imagine? Leif Erikson, didn't he discover America? <laughs> <laughs> so did you see that this was an Elia Kazan movie? Like the, uh, he was the guy who was blacklisted, right? For being a commie? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Because I don't know. That's the only thing I know from him. Richard Day? Wait, what? No, I don't know. I don't know about him. <laughs> sure, he's a hell of a guy. What's your favorite art director? Yeah, I love art directors, but I just love them. I'm not a big Richard Day fan. I mean, it's okay. This is fine. Maybe this is his best movie. Well, I know Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. I don't know this guy. Oh, I don't know that guy. Fuck him. Really? Yeah. What about this character? That's Elia Kazan. Huh. I always wondered why it was a big deal he was booted from Hollywood because I'd never seen a single one of his movies. These guys roll. Yeah, seriously. I love how like they just they look like dock workers, man. I feel like if you made this movie now, yeah. these would all be just fucking studs. They would just they'd be uh, boy bands. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they look like people have been doing this shit. I wonder if they actually yeah, cast yeah. it that way. Like if a lot of the extras are... I don't want to see if they can get a face paper or anything. I got a couple of cameras. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> Just a smoking bride. Yes, she's my new friend. 
One time at a, a bar I was working at, there was a woman sitting at the bar in a wedding dress, pounding shots of whiskey by herself. Hell yeah. And I was too busy to ask what was going on. Besides the obvious? I, I mean, it was heartbreaking. <laughs> ah, give me a cigarette, see? <laughs> it's my wedding day, Ken. Yeah, I feel like like this is a movie where people are like, "Oh, Marlon Brando, he's so like smoldering and handsome, but he just looks like a, like kind of like a palooka, you know?" Yeah, right. The hell? They just invented rules for cars. It's a Mario Kart. <laughs> This is the most <laughs> hardcore leftist priest I've ever seen in my life. It's just Jake Flores as a fucking priest. <laughs> I'm on the waterfront with you guys. I'm a priest. <laughs> All right, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this Chapo trap house. <laughs> All right, back to work. <laughs> Forget the dead man in the middle of the... Well, load him out first. <laughs> Feet first. Got an order for one of those. Way we practiced. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> She's a nun. She's not used to <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll, I'll fix this. A little bit lower. There we go. Oh, lower. So why does this work? Because he's a rough and tumble former boxer, and she's a confused nun trying to make it. In right, but she world. she hates him for not helping her, but now she doesn't. Well, feelings are complicated. <sighs> Don't like that. I'm born to Georgetown to exercise a demon. <laughs> You get out of her, see? <laughs> I'm just a potato eater. I'm just a... <laughs> I don't truck with no demons. Your mother peels potatoes in hell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> She's an alcoholic and a bitch. Well... <laughs> I'm the unknown comic, see? <laughs> well, he's got to go talk to his pigeons. Uh oh. Okay, I'm going to say this carefully. And I hope everybody understands my intentions here. But I would kill for that kid's haircut. <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> it's a nice hair, I guess. It's a really nice haircut. I'd kill for anyone's haircut, to be honest with you. <laughs> but what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> he threw a dead pigeon! He fucking killed his pigeon! This kid's a Dexter now, dude! Jesus. Ah, his reward. Work. A hard day's labor for reward. very little money. Second uh, leading female part in this movie. A what? That was that was loud. What What do you think? Uh, it's cool. I liked it. It was fun. <laughs> I liked it. It was good. It was a. It's very different from what like it, the way we made today. Yeah. I'm trying to think what movie. It was reminding me of some movie with halfway through, and I couldn't put my finger on which one. 
that's like kind of current. But we don't make like labor dramas very often anymore. And that's what the, this was essentially. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because I feel like um, at least like I feel like that's like a big thing now that people are talking about. Right. With politics is, is, is labor and, um, you know, the, the return of socialism or, or, or whatever you want to call it. Like, it's, it's interesting to see. Yeah. That not be reflected in uh, in movies. Huh. I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of movies that are sort of about corporate intrigue, like workplace dramas. But there's nothing like this where it's like a labor politics kind of drama. I guess the closest we've had in terms of prestige movies would be like uh, Spotlight or something where like the press is fighting against government yeah, corruption. Yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of in the mold of this movie. But uh-huh. this the the government and the cops are like barely involved in this movie. They, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, I think it was interesting that they were like, just investigating this guy in court, and they just let him go. Like, they weren't he's like just back to, at the, nothing happened. It was an inquiry. Yeah, it wasn't. A he snitched on him, and there there case. didn't seem to be a lot of consequences, unless he was maybe kicked out, but he was still secretly running it. I don't know. No, it said like that that he was expecting to get indicted. Oh, uh, okay. So I think the inquiry was going to lead to. But yeah, okay. it was it was almost more like a journalistic thing that kept saying, oh, you know, the story of this needs to get out. Yeah. Rather than we need to, like, bust the bad guys. Anyway, oh, recap. For those of you who haven't seen On the Waterfront. Shame on you. <laughs> now that we've seen it, we can be uppity about it. You know? <laughs> what is Marlon? Marlon Brando's an old boxer, ex-boxer. Yeah. Not that old. No, he was pushing 30. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Wait, wasn't that you, like, last week? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's an ex-boxer. He's working at a dock. There's a union, and it's corrupt. There's, like, a mob leadership to the union running things. And I guess part of their, like, staying in charge is they got to kill people every once in a while. You know, so mobs have to do. Yeah. It's part of their job. And then they decide who works and who doesn't. And everybody in this movie really really wants to do this shitty job yeah it yeah. it seems like a very idealized sort of american thing to be like no we're gonna go work we need to work and we make no money but we work hard you know what they you know the parallel is to today though what? is that like because it seems so weird to us to see all these people like oh i'm fighting really hard for the right to go do this crappy job and we're like why would you Find a better job where yeah, they're not she... fucking you over every day. Yeah. But I think that, like, today, that'd be, like, immigrants who are, like, trying yeah. to get, trying, just trying to fucking get here, k- killing themselves, trying to get here to do shitty work. Yeah. Because they need just anything. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's yeah. the position these dudes were in. And it's interesting that, like, there's the guy, the older guy, who's, I, I don't know if he was supposed to be from Ireland or what that accent was, but he was, like... They're all from Ireland. Yeah, they call them more. Uh, where he was basically like, just like in Boondock Saints, uh, where he was like, "You've been, I've been doing this my whole life, and I don't have nothing to show for it." And again, it's it's such like a um, an old, just weird American thing. Yeah. To be like, I'm gonna like like it's such a Protestant sounding thing to me. Yes. To be like, I'm gonna suffer so much. For nothing, and I'm gonna love it. Yeah, and I'm gonna fight for my right to do that. I can't wait to go to work where my boss is gonna bully me for 40 years straight. Mm -hmm. My hands hurt, my wife's dead. One of my arms is two inches longer than the other now. Yeah. Which is honestly kind of cool. Yeah. I don't see how that's a disadvantage. Seems kind of fun. I mean, like, you'd be better at bowling. (laughs) Wait, hold on. So. Did one of the arms shrink, or did no. one of the arms get bigger? I think one got longer because that was the one he used to pick stuff up. He could have been like a really good bass player. He could have just alternated arms. I don't think there was a rule about only using one arm. Yeah. Well, you know, it was a different time. You know, the, the, there wasn't a lot of OSHA back then. I mean, they were barely <laughs> investigating the, the murders that were taking place. <laughs> OSHA rules. <laughs> 
OSHA, dude. Uh, oh my god. So the plot is uh, Marlon Brando eventually gets fed up with it one piece at a time. He runs into a blonde who, who was going to be a nun, but she changed her mind because she met Marlon Brando and his pigeons. He keeps pigeons? Yeah. <laughs> she she was going to be a nun, and then she realized she was the most beautiful woman on earth. <laughs> so she decided, oh, you know what? I'd rather fuck Marlon Brando. Right. Not only the most beautiful woman on earth, but one of only three. The, oh yeah, there were three of them. One of them is is, is is sort of like a like a Bronx chick who's like, ah, I'm smoking on my wedding day and stuff like that. She was my favorite. Yeah, no, she was pretty cool. She could probably. But she me. was taken. Yeah, so. yeah, she was taken. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, got to respect, you know. The wedding dress at the bar. You got to respect the wedding dress at a bar. If you see it, this is coming from a bartender. If you see a wedding dress at a bar. Buy her a shot, but leave her alone. Buy her a shot and leave her alone. Yeah, man. That time I was at work, I was working the second floor, two-story building. I ran downstairs to grab some from the kitchen, and that woman, I saw a woman sitting in a wedding dress, pounding whiskey, and I was so mad at myself that I was so far behind in my in my work because I wanted to know everything. And then yeah. two hours later, after the lunch uh, rush was done, during the day, by the way, uh, I talked to the other bartender, George, who works downstairs, and I was like, hey, dude, what was up with that lady in the wedding dress? Yeah. He was like, he was like well, I didn't see What are you talking about? He didn't even notice. He didn't notice in the middle of, I assume it was a Saturday. No, it was, no, it was Tuesday. Tuesday or Thursday, because that's when he would work. A Tuesday day like, wedding. No wonder it fell apart. Yeah, what an odd thing. There's so many strange things there. <laughs> well, anyway, something like more fun than that. It's married on a Tuesday. I mean, I never even thought about that. You do save a lot of money on the venues, but it's generally not a daytime thing. Yeah. I mean, because it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's oh, it's definitely Tuesday. It's, it's totally Tuesday. <laughs> that's, what, that, that's what she was saying to herself when she was taking shots. She said, oh, totally Tuesday, huh? Take Maybe she didn't have friends adults. and that was her bachelorette party. Maybe. <laughs> bachelorette party in a wedding dress. Yeah, she's like, I'll put the dress on and go on some whiskey in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Until uh, I feel better. Why not? Uh, well, so did you like the movie? Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I like. I, there were parts of it that were laughable. Yeah, I think mostly for just being kind of old timey. Yeah, and nothing, nothing horrible. And at first, I didn't like Marlon Brando's acting at all. No. I yeah, he you, was way underacting this thing. You were saying that it almost was like he was doing the cue cards bit, where he was. Right. Yeah, I th- but I think maybe that was the point: is that he was sort of underacting it because I don't know he's this beaten down former you know boxing champ or whatever yeah I think he was supposed to be like detached yeah like he could barely engage with the world and then like this blonde who was Eva St. Marie I think pulls him out of it and he becomes like a lot more active and emotional and all that stuff and it gets a lot more interesting all of a sudden they do that classic like 50s, 60s thing where the dude's like, I'm going to come over and I'm going to lay my lips on yours. And, then, and, and and she's like, no. And then he does it and then she's like, yeah. Like super into it. Yeah. That is always a thing. It's always movies. a thing. And you know what? It's funny. Uh, for those of you who listen to all the episodes. Can, well, thank you. We appreciate it. We do. And also, you remember from Rocky, where I recoiled in horror when Rocky did that. Yeah, Rocky, Rocky. God, it was. It's the most uncomfortable. That scene. that won an Academy Award. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, for the screenplay, right? For the whole thing, best picture. Really, it was I, nominated for screenplay, just but it won best picture. I totally forgot that Rocky won an Academy Award. Yeah. And he does that move where he goes, well, first, actually, he doesn't go to her apartment. He drags her into his. Yeah. And then he forces himself on her. Yeah. While she's literally verbally saying, no, and I'm uncomfortable and I'm going to leave. This was like the abbreviated version of that. It was very And because it was abridged, it was sort of like, well, you know. She wasn't. She wasn't actually saying no. Right, and then in that in that scenario, no. I and think so. That made it a lot less icky. Possibly that might have been like you know that old thing where oh I have to, I have to you know. Well, she act was chase in and, just a nightgown, yeah. and she was pissed at him. And she's a nun. And she's a nun. So like a little token resistance. Yeah. To I do be think, expected. I do think it's interesting that like Sylvester Stallone in his script just included that, and probably had no idea. You probably just put that in there and was just like, 
uh, you know, is what the broads do. Oh, it's bit. totally read as like this is what he thought. This is how you think you get a girl. Yeah. I mean, it. it I don't want to get back back on rock. Yeah. Because that's been bothering me ever since I saw don't that. Do that. Movie. Buy her flowers. Sly, secret to a lady's heart. He flowers. Took her, he took her ice skating. And boxing. Yeah, that's true. So what I don't know what it is with boxers. Uh, this keeps coming up. It's almost and, like they have aggressive, violent tendencies. They have. <laughs> and are competitive. And, try and to don't get really respect want. boundaries. No. Which is weird. Yeah. yeah. What did you like the best about this? If I could be so bold. Oh, God. Um, I, what did I like the best about it? Some of the shots were really good. Yeah, you said you really liked that, that shot where the priest yeah. and the guy are coming out of the little pit after that guy died or whatever they're long they let you take in the scene they let you really look at the ex they they, they cast some of the most interesting looking people i so, think i've seen in a movie yeah they they fit that so uh so well you know what also did that very well huh. is the goddamn uh the dark knight <gasps> yeah i Those never really thought about it that way look like the people who are on like the ferry boats the people who are like uh, on uh, the Joker side. Oh, in his gang. In his gang. Yeah. At first, they kind of like you. They just look like normal, like like punks or whatever. Right. But then you're like, oh no, you look kind of like deranged. Like, and then they they get the um the uh, the corrupt cop looking perfect. The mobsters looking perfect. So like, yeah, I love when movies do that. When movies have yes. people who look like they've led an actual life and they're they've been like beaten. Yeah, this movie was like it was a nothing but people. it was a sea of Danny Trejos, basically. Like there was not a clean cut looking person outside of Marlon Brando. Yeah, I mean they had they even had like a, a an Andre the Giant type with huge hands. His hands were enormous. It's like they had frying pans. <laughs> Soft, gushy frying pans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had one guy whose eye socket was somewhere near his mouth. Yeah, that was that was that really was hard to watch. Yeah, that guy that guy could have like licked his eyeball. Oh, That's how close it was. <laughs> Why he would do that, I don't know. But honestly, that might be my favorite part of the movie. That was the guy who died. Uh, he yeah, he he got smushed, he got smushed by some whiskey. Death. Smushed by whiskey. The, he was one of the murders. So the whole plot is easy to sum up. I don't know if I got to the end, but uh, it's basically is a will he or won't he snitch for marlon brando and he does yeah and then weirdly there's a third act after he snitches that's not like the end of the movie yeah i thought that was interesting he redeems himself with the union by like backing up his snitch and still confronting the mob boss outside of the court system they have a boxing match and everything so like i see why they came around to him because it's like oh you're not just a coward yeah who doesn't stand with us you're literally yeah, and this Backing is this, up. this is the boss who has treated us like shit. Yeah. So yeah, fuck him. Let's watch him get. Yeah, don't run to the cops, but kick his ass. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> they love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I liked it. Um, uh, I I agree with you that there definitely is some moments where you're just like, what? But that that's definitely a uh, just a product of the times, I guess, in filmmaking. Then what I what I like about movies like that is that it's almost like like they stage it, like they block it out, like it's a play, you know, with those long shots, yeah, where you don't think about like it, you kind of I, I kind of for, would no like, like when they would switch camera angles or whatever or cut, I'd be like oh like I would kind of notice it more. Now right. movies are especially you know with like the if, if that movie was made today, it'd be like cut 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 cut. cut. You know yeah. what I mean? And also the fighting would be like super stylized and choreographed. What I love about old movies like this is that the fighting just looks like a bunch of grown men who really don't know how to fight. They have no training. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's not like now where it'd be like, all right, we're going to put you on this crazy diet. You're going to get super ripped. I'm going to teach you Krav Maga and we're going to shoot it, blah, blah. No, it's just dudes <laughs> crashing into each other. Yeah, and they're just wrestling. They're just they're wrestling. On the ground in suits. At one point, the guy's leg just comes up. He when does try to, like, straddle it's him. It's so weirdly. weird. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, Brando gets some good punches in, but he's supposed to be a he's boxer. He's a boxer, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's okay. The, uh, I, let's, what was your favorite part of the movie? Um, I liked them fighting at the end. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Because you, you finally... Because everyone always talked about, you know, oh, this guy... Oh, you were a former boxer. I saw you do this. Oh, you were good. Whatever happened to you? Then you got to see him, actually. I like to see him actually be like, 
yeah, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. I could have done something. He does get a little superhero at the end there where he breaks in a door. He busts open a window. Yeah. It, it's almost like his superpower he was reluctant to use. Yeah, yeah for sure. He's using it again. Uh, but he gets the shit kicked out of him. He does. By like six guys at the end. And the whole dramatic end is him staggering to work. <laughs> Which, I mean... That's the point of the movie. Work is its own reward. Without, but, without work, we have nothing, as a wise man once said. You know what's weird? Is that it's a mob movie, but the mob is not a mob. You know, it's not like an organized crime family. It's not an ethnicity. Yeah, they're just all... They're just the union bosses who went corrupt. Yeah. Essentially. So it's almost left of union politics. Yeah, it's but super or left. right of union. But it's hard to tell because like they implied that cooperating with the cops was the right thing to do. Yeah. So they could get their union back and everybody could work. I guess that's sort of the, the problem with unions is that they, you know, the problem that they present is that the idea of like, okay, we're going to band together and we're going to get treated the way that humans should be treated, this, that, their thing. But it could be, it, it could be, if you don't have the right people in charge of it, I mean, then it's going to get, it could or it could rather get fucked, get fucked. And it's just another layer of organization fucking layer, yeah. you over. And that was what was weird. There's this priest in the movie. This potato-eating priest. This potato-eating son of a bitch. And he calls himself that. Not the son of a bitch. That's... Yeah. No, that'd be, that'd be offensive. Yeah. That's just Pat Dean's just me. take on priests. My, my rage. My Catholic <laughs> rage. My Irish anger. He's the one who's like trying to be the Harvey Dent in this Dark Knight yeah, scenario. He is, yeah. And he's trying to like rally the troops to overthrow their corrupt oppressors. And they won't do it because of Omerta and you know, they just got each other's back, and also most of them I don't think knew how to talk. Um, yeah, but well, yeah, it was weird. That's just an Irish it. thing. We never Irish. want to talk. We don't want to talk. <laughs> no, no whiskey. No. no we're gonna drink, and we're not gonna talk about our feelings. <laughs> Leave us alone. That was definitely the ethos of this movie. Yep, um, a lot of whiskey. Yeah, yeah, lots of whiskey. Some of it called Patty. Um, yeah, there was a whiskey called Patty. <laughs> I mean, what? The nose. I mean, how? What else? Or authentic? It's hard to say. Yeah. But because well, the priest yeah. is rallying the troops and he's basically trying to, he's acting like a union organizer. He's like saying, look, there's, there's a lot of us, there's a couple of them, if we band together, we can overthrow them. And it's weird because he's talking about the union. Like, yeah. you're trying to unionize against your union. It's very strange. And especially because it's like, it's interesting to see that from that point of view because it, I, I, He's a. I assume he's a Catholic priest. They don't really. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he talks oh, about God. potatoes and stuff. So I assume he's Catholic. Well, and he's also wearing the collar and the nun thing. Yeah. That's yeah. The nun. Clue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Confession. So it's interesting that. <laughs> yeah. He comes from that character comes from a background of extreme like authority, uh, like, like authority. Yeah. And organization and stuff. So it's kind of interesting to see that character be the one who's like. No, fuck these guys. Like, we got to take these guys down. We got to take down the corrupt leaders. And it's like, well, where... Yeah, but the Catholic Church, for all its many, 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 many flaws. Name one. Faults. Flaws. I don't... Yeah. Yeah. From the last 2,000 years, I'll think about it. Yeah. I'm sure I can come up with something. For all of that, it's always been the most left-leaning church. Like, it's definitely like... Yeah, I wonder why that is. They, they really take the whole help the poor thing a little more seriously than some of the other denominations of Christianity. And to the point where they get, of course, all Catholic about it and rigid, like right and wrong. Yeah. Black and white. But I, th- I can it makes sense that the Catholic Church, who's interested in helping solve poverty more than other churches, would be the one that would be involved here. But I don't think that's why. I think it was the Irish angle. It was pretty clear that almost everybody on the team was... In the in the union was Irish. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was hard for me to tell with the. And it was uh, New York, we believe. Yeah, the head union people because a couple of those guys look like Italian dudes. Yeah, but I think I think it's kind of what you said earlier, where it's like they were just a business. They weren't like it wasn't a thing where it's like you got to be Sicilian to join or, or, right. or we have to trace your your grandparents back to Italy. Or it wasn't really like that. It seemed like it was a mix of uh, mostly. Irish looking dudes and, and, and Italian looking dudes, maybe some, some Polish people thrown in. Well they said Johnny Friendly's real name in court, and I forget what it was. Oh they did? It was pretty ethnic. Either Italian or Irish, I couldn't remember. 
It was either Cullen or something. Yeah, they, he, Johnny, Johnny Friendlini. Johnny, Johnny Friendly was not his real name. Johnny Amigo. And Brando makes an, an allusion at one point to being Italian. He, where he, she's like, you know, what you, you know, you just like this, and then he like bent his nose, which I think is like a way of saying I'm Italian, right? Well, I think he was saying that because the nose bend thing was supposed to be like he broke his nose oh, boxing. boxing. But because didn't he, he look said like his, it. No, not really. He said his, he, they said his name. It didn't really sound like anything. It just sounded like, it was like Tully or something. Which oh, I don't Tully know what the fuck is, that is. It's fucking Irish. I mean, probably. Yeah, Tully O'Tullivan. Tully O'Tullivan. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was his grandparents' name when they came to this country and in and, and fucking Ellis Island. They just went, nope. <laughs> That's too much. No, you're not. You're just Tully. You get half on. of that yeah. tops. I liked it. Yeah, it was um, it was cool. Um, it, it's definitely, I definitely see why you know Marlon Brando was so acclaimed for it because especially towards towards the end of it, yeah, when he really was allowed to let loose with his uh, with his acting, you know, it wasn't overacted though. Like I mean, no. I guess that's why people think he's the greatest because he doesn't until later in his career. I, I guess he's not much. I saw the Wild Bunch. Or The Wild Ones. That was the name of that movie I saw. The Wild Wild West? No. The Wild One. It, was, he, it came out the year before this, and he's in that same mode where he's not overdoing it, but he still has like this charisma. You know, I'm just now realizing the last movie that we watched together was Justice League. Yeah, that was definitely a different theme. Probably won't be covered on this podcast. No, we can talk about it if you want. Well, no, I was just saying it'd be funny if they won like an Academy Award for like best... like sound or something and you had to watch it i didn't like any of the sounds in that movie it was so dumb <laughs> i loved it i love dumb shit Everything i guess I that's like a movie bad. about unionizing <laughs> 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 but what superman represents man <laughs> is <laughs> batman's like the you know union boss trying to get everybody banded together yeah. Yeah, and then who who are they fighting in that one? There's a, uh, they're, was that the Chitari or am I thinking Marvel? That, that's Marvel. They're fighting they're, they're, something that looks exactly Steppenwolf. Like Steppenwolf, right? From the uh, the the new gods. They're all they're, they're all gods. In, yeah, in DC, I that's forgot. the uh, the Jack Kirby stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're fighting aliens though. Steppenwolf yeah. and a bunch of alien looking. He's things. part of uh, yeah. He's I think a a harbinger of uh, of uh, uh, dark uh, dark side. Darkseid. That's right. That's yeah, right. So, so they just want to get to work. Yeah, same thing. They want to do. They They're want to there. shovel the aliens. They want to do their work. They, they want to show up, terraform the Earth, uh, and and Superman won't let him. He won't let him. <laughs> he just <laughs> won't let him. Where was the priest in that one? You know? uh, that would probably be the Aquaman or something. Let's see, Wonder Woman's Eve Saint Marie because she's the one that makes everybody feel better by flirting with them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, no, Aquaman's not the priest. He's not the no. Bruce right, right. Bruce Wayne's the priest. Yeah, he yeah. is sort of like a moral sort of. He's uh, the one trying to egg him on into doing it. Man, I kind of like. I fucking really like stupid Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. I do too. Like he's like an older alcoholic, like hurt Bruce Wayne. Like he's been yes. knocked around for twenty years in that movie. I think his. Batman is the best one we've had since Michael since Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah. I never really bought Christian Bale's was kind of blank to me. Yeah, it was fine, but there was no personality to him. There were he was just no. yeah, he's a blank slate. Yeah. Um his Batman voice was was silly. Uh but like in Ben Affleck's Batman voice was a little bit silly, but it wasn't as silly as um as the stuff they made him drive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, so yeah, I, I thought he was a great Batman, and now you, you read all the stuff where he's trying to leave, and it's like, buddy. Well, because he's not getting his way. I think yeah. he thought he was going to get, like, control of the whole universe. Yeah, that's not how it works, Ben. I hey, mean, Ben, that's not how it works. Just because one of your ex-girlfriends played Electra. <laughs> she did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she did. And he was Daredevil. And he was that Daredevil. That movie fucking sucked. Yeah, it did. You know, sometimes it takes you two or three superheroes before you get it right. I mean, yeah. Look at Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, I don't. What's what's his name? Uh, Brolin. He keeps Brolin? getting more shots. Who's that? Josh Brolin. Oh, Josh Brolin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he, like nineteen different yeah. people. He's finally getting better at it. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 odd. Uh, I think Marlon Brando would have been a good Batman. 
Get <laughs> <laughs> me out. He would have sucked. He would have so bad. No, I but, think he would have been. Is he why, fighting what? this? He fucking barely going to throw a punch. Oh, well, that was just training. Yeah. You know, put him in the... Put him in the trainer with, with uh, Wonder Woman. He'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I think he would have been. He would have played it like cool. Yeah. And then when he was Batman, he would have yelled some stuff in a really iconic way. Okay. I think be good. Yeah, man. That's all you got to do is you got to play it cool, and then every once in a while bust out a line that makes people like remember it. I can see. And that's that what he did in this movie. That whole I could have been a contender speech. Honestly, it didn't. It was there. It seemed famous. It was the line was delivered well. I liked my dad's rendition better. I do too. The impressions are better than the original. Yeah, I yeah. like my dad's rendition of "I could have been a contender" better than Marlon Brando, and I'm going to tell him that, and he's going to go, "Oh my god!" He's going to go, "What is this podcast?" You don't have to because this is going out globally. Oh yeah, to the world. It would be it, interesting if he just listened to all of them. We well, should. <laughs> my father. We're doing think, this for. You remember what I said at the beginning? We're doing this for one person. It's my father! It's your dad. John Dean. It's it's about time. Son of a gun. That you had a real talk. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Not far off. But yeah, fair enough. Uh, that'd be funny if you listened to this. Why was... Oh, that's enough about... That. I, I'm, I, I don't have much more to say about the movie. Yeah, it was, it was... It wasn't that long. It was regular length. Yeah, so you you were saying the other movies are, are all, were all longer? Yeah, Best Picture winners, they tend to reward people who spend a lot of money, make a lot of money, That's and true. drag on too long. I wonder what the shortest one is. It's Annie Hall. Oh, that one? I, uh... Yeah. Huh. That was the last you know, comedy to win. Unless I you count Shakespeare in Love. I, I remember <laughs> watching that movie and, and thinking it was more like a, like a drama than a comedy. I don't know. I've never seen it and I'm dreading it. Yeah, because I have strong feelings about Woody Allen, and I, yeah, well, yeah, of course. I don't, but I'm forcing myself to watch this, which is supposed to be his best movie, right? It's good. Yeah, it is good. Um, well, no spoilers. <laughs> You'd spoil it. It's so, Annie Hall. Spoiler is a pedophile. <laughs> so, sorry, listeners. Sorry, Dad. Sorry, I fucked it up for you, Dad. I really apologize for that. Yeah, I always, I always kind of viewed that movie more like a drama than a uh, than a comedy. There's, mo- there's moments that make you laugh for sure, but well, I guess for because it's Woody Allen, it's associated with comedy. Yeah, yeah. Because it has a jazz soundtrack too to it. Oh God, of course it does. Put down your fucking clarinet. I know. Why does everything have to sound like a star- Starbucks in your world? Why does it all? Why? I, whatever. I hate. There's a specific. I'm disappointed kind of in jazz. you, Woody Allen. That I call Starbucks jazz that I can't stand. Starbucks jazz, what yeah, is and that? it's it's like it's real jazz. It's not easy listening jazz. It's not smooth jazz, but it's the most annoying kind of it. It's like the you know the the saxophone or whatever the lead instrument it is runs up and down all over the place and it's supposed to oh, make like, you feel sophisticated like when you read the New York Times and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. And you do not like that. No, I don't. And the reason I don't is because it's always playing in situations where people want to feel smart but are not. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. And uh, I like the music itself. I'll sit down and listen to Coltrane or I'll listen to Miles Davis. But that doesn't seem to be what's playing. It's like some back catalog of B-sides of shit that sounds like that, but it's just annoying. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that John Coltrane went a little insane. Like, he went so far... He became so unbelievably good yeah. at his his improvisations that it kind of ruined his action. It's like it's like you know that fucking band Dream Theater. Yes. So like you're never gonna listen to that and be like, "Wow, this is such a well written song." You're gonna go, "This is the most technical shit I've ever heard in my life." Yeah, the like only people John- who like Dream Theater are drummers, right? Yeah, dr- yeah, drummers and prog rockers. You're not going to listen to like later John Coltrane stuff and be like, oh, I'm going to bob my head to this. You're just going to be like, holy shit, listen to this guy. Fucking go. He's incredible. Yeah. And with Miles Davis, Miles Davis was never um, a technical virtuoso on that level. So that's why his music, I think, is better. Yeah, it's more... Bitches Brew is fucking incredible. It's more emotional. It's more catchy. You're listening to Jazz Time with hey, Pat guys. and Karina. Jazz Talk, uh, 96.7 W, W, F, U, X. My name is Jazz Dean, and we are talking jazz. Did you know that I played 
upright bass at Carnegie Hall when I was in high school. Hell yeah, you know what I did at Carnegie Hall when I was in high school? What did you do? I sang Negro spirituals with my all-white suburban choir. <laughs> from Colorado? <laughs> yes, from Colorado. Jeez. Yeah, at the time we thought it was really prestigious. Now I'm just super embarrassed. So yeah, you probably had like, and we all were young, so you probably still had your weird Colorado accents. So it's probably like, <laughs> swing low, sweet chariot, or whatever. Like, what the hell is a weird Colorado accent? It's the, the, they have Colorado, Colorado. They have a weird little thing. I. D- you do a little. I know. I did not think there was a Colorado. Oh, accent. Oh, this is a Colorado accent. Wow. I love accents because I don't think I really have one. And no, I, no, I, no, love, I don't have one. You do a little. You you have one. What's my accent? That cool, ang- handsome, anger. <laughs> that's not an accent. That's well, a crippling emotional problem that's ruined uh, every relationship I've ever been in. Yeah, well, you seem to make it into an accent. <laughs> See? No, I love I love accents. Um, no, Colorado accents are are one hundred percent a thing. Colorado accents, but they're slight. Like they're not the Colorado. What I think is very funny with the Colorado accent is that. When you say the word Colorado, it comes out because it's Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, I'm from Colorado. Colorado. It's Colorado is bullshit. Colorado. Well, well, hey, you know. Well, yeah. I'm not going to argue. It's our version of Man Shack. We wanted to get away as far <laughs> as far from Spanish pronunciation as possible. The Baltimore accent is so the worst one. So that we can feel better about skiing on native land. <laughs> is Colorado native land? It's all native land. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. My sister lives there, but I don't know. Really? I don't know anything about the history of it. No, no, no. Really? Like, no, well, no. Everything's native land. But I know. But I mean, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Colorado... Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the Arapaho, Utes, Cheyenne. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. They were the they were the nice people, too. Not mm-hmm. like the Texas one. The, the mean ones. Oh, uh, yeah. The Comanche. I'm probably now. I'm, now I'm probably going to get hate mail. I know I've been brainwashed to think the Comanche were mean, but... <laughs> My understanding was that, that other tribes didn't like him either, right? I don't know. I mean, who knows? I'm sure there were a few that were mean people. You're listening to Native American Talk with You're Patine listening to Korea. Bash the Natives with <laughs> Karina Magyar and... Potato Pat- Eater Patrick. Old, <laughs> pota- old Potato Pat checking in. <laughs> We've got the phrase that pays coming up. You can win tickets to see Hinder. Caller number 700. Today's phrase that pays is, this land is your land. <laughs> no, <laughs> This no. land is my land. Oh, no. The worst accent in America is, is the Baltimore accent. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say Woody Guthrie. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, I don't know what his accent is like. but uh, It's the, better than Arla's. The, uh, the, the Baltimore accent sucks. Baltimore is, yeah. Baltimore is a pretty terrible city, and the most people who live there are pretty terrible, uh, but <laughs> the accent is the worst part. Well, not so much Baltimore. It's more Maryland just in general. I guess it's unfair to say an entire city is bad. But it's not unfair to say an entire state is bad. Okay. That's what we were learning today. Okay. I got you. I grew up right near them, and I'm not a fan. Well, I think we all have contempt for the people who grew up near us and had accents we didn't like. I hate them. I, my parents were from Cleveland. And it's my Cleveland entire accent. extended family has a very thick Ohio accent. What is an Ohio accent? I can't do it, thank God. Really? But it's super nasal and back of your throat. Oh, no. It's more like the part of your face you talk from. Oh, (laughs) that sucks. Than like a vowel thing. Yeah. It's it's like a Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana thing. Well, oh, okay. The Western, the... the Like, think think Pittsburgh and then take all of the, like, mook out of it. Oh, no, no. (laughs) That's bad. That's pretty bad. I'm going to look that up as soon as we're done here. Really annoying. Uh, yeah, the, the Pittsburgh accent, I think, is just funny. And, like, like the, the, the Pennsylvania kind of accent, I think, I think, I think is very funny. But the Baltimore accent, man, it makes me want to put a, a knife in my brain and twist it until I fucking die. Well, thanks for listening to our podcast here from Texas. Yes. Everybody's favorite accent. Hey, well, hey, you know, well, you know what? At least there's um, fucking dignity with that accent. Yeah, it's real presidential, you can, unfortunately. You can, you can walk into a room with a Texas accent and people are like, oh, this fucking guy probably knows what he's talking about. Or is faking a Texan accent because nobody has one anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's also kind of sad, but what That's not do? true. I mean, if you go to the parts of Texas where there's still only five channels on TV. Something I greatly enjoy is when, is when somebody sort of speaks normal and then kind of like a non-regional thing. And then yeah. they have like three drinks and they're fucking... <laughs> Boston, their shitty Boston accent comes. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. I get that. I get with five. Put five beers in me. Okay, my, which I will, which my, I'm planning on. My native accent 
will come out. Unfortunately, with it will come my native voice. Like my voice drops three octaves. After really? Five years. Yeah, because like it's. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Know that. So I hate I it. So that's, that. it's good. It's keeping me from drinking too much because I have to get home because I'm always mortified the next day when I think about how I'm shouting uh, in this deep voice. I love that you're not mortified by what you said. You're never. mortified by how you said it. I never regret anything I say late at night while not sleeping at 2 in the morning. I used to. I used to uh, <laughs> get drunk and then the next day be like, well, well, shouldn't have said that to that person. But then, like, I hit, I don't know, like, 32, and I was yeah. like, well, fuck you. You don't like it. I think it was after my second divorce that I realized that people aren't thinking about what I said as much as I thought they were. Really? Yeah. I was like, wow, even, like, the most intimate people in your life are only barely hearing what you're saying. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So you can get away with a lot. Huh. You can even be president. Do you think you'd get married a third time? Um, well, it kind of depends on the timing of the legality of that. What if it's like, what, so what, so if I, it's so, still allowed, yeah. So I make, I make a phone call. You're going to make a phone call. And I, and I, I, I make sure everything's cool. You're going to take care of the Supreme Court. I, I take care of it. It's a whole thing. You do have connections great, in, the, in the judicial yes, branch. I do. I, I great personal expense. So, so everything's all good as far as that goes. Okay. Do you think you would do it? Would you do it? <sighs> yeah, I would. Yeah. To the right woman? Sure. Yeah. I'm kind of the, the Marian type. That's how yeah. I got into this situation to begin with. Hmm. Yeah. Would you? I don't know. It seems weird. It is weird. I like I like being by myself a lot. Do, yeah. I need it. What's your longest relationship? Uh, not long at all. Okay. No. I didn't, sorry this got personal. That's alright, I don't care. On a movie podcast. Not a, uh, not a hit. On a movie slash jazz slash Native American talk yeah, podcast. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, no, Pat Dean, not, 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 not a big hit. So you're just, was, you've you've not lived, you've not signed a lease with someone else and seen it I through. No, yeah. See, I agree. Now I'm with you because I had never been alone until the last three years. Mm -hmm. I'd never lived alone. I'd always had a roommate or somebody I was with, and I was terrified for the first year of it. And now I'm getting so used to it. I'm like, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's um. You know, it's kind of nice. I've lived with myself in two apartments in Austin, and I've lived with roommates in three, and it's always fine. Like it doesn't matter either way. But I think I, yeah, you know, it depends on the quality of the roommate. I've got these kids; they're my roommates. Oh no, you know, but they're barely here. They work so hard. Yeah, you have them locked in the closet right now, so luckily they can't <laughs> interfere with our podcast. Well, they gotta, they gotta go into the. They gotta go into the pit tomorrow down at the at the docks. Not now, honey. Mommy's talking about Marlon Brando. <laughs> oh with my god! A man you're probably frightened of. I think I just caused flashbacks amongst all the baby boomers listening. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, mommy's talking about Marlon Brando, and well, maybe I just gotta meet the right lady and get married. Who I knows? mean. That's what society wants you to do. Well, you know what I say to society? Yeah. I say you've got some pretty valid points sometimes. Well, I mean, I'm Not speaking always. of society in general, like magazines and movies. The people that know you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. If you do or not. <laughs> It's extremely true. Look, we'd all be happy for you, but honestly, it's not. Like... It'd be so funny. Wouldn't it be funny if I got married? It'd be awesome. You would throw a great wedding. Yeah, it'd be so much fun. I think it'd be too super duper fun. I think I'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I think that part would, would, would be pretty cool. I just think it'd be real funny. I remember my mom told my brother that she always suspected that I would just come back to Virginia to like visit her and just bring some lady and be like, oh yeah, we got married like a week ago. Oh, that you would just do it? Yeah. You know what which I think? Kind of, kind of, which would be kind of tight, actually. And this is weird and sincere, but I truly think this. I think that if you ever meet a woman that you're going to marry... Woman, right? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, what? Because I will tell you this... It's a wider dating pool. Well, it's a wider dating pool, and I, I will say I'm a, I'm a bigger hit with the other side. Good for you. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't bother me, but... No. Well, it bothers me a little bit. <laughs> but what can you do? <laughs> but you know what? I think... Thank, I go, thank you, sir. Good night. Go if home. you meet the lucky lady, the luckiest lady in the world, who gets to uh, link up with you in marriage, I bet you she's gonna be badass. I can I only so. see you ending up with a cool, good person. Well, that's nice to say. I hope so. And I think that's 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 because you've not been 
hooking up with bad people. Yeah. For no, I haven't. Of time and no, getting I haven't. more progressively more and more broken. You're exactly as broken as you were when you were born. Yeah, that's so a good place to be. Y- yeah, that's you know what I mean. It's the people. It's it's hard when you've had your heart broken a couple times to keep landing on people who don't want to do it to you. You're you're. You repeat bad patterns. It's oh yeah, it's like it's like a recurring uh, sort of cycle. Yeah, exactly. So you got no cycle. How do we break these cycles? I feel like that they're impossible to break. Well, I think you have to uh, confess the truth to your girlfriend. That's not happening. And then the cops, <laughs> and then you got to beat up the bad guy. That's what we learned, isn't it? We learned from our friend Marlon Brando, Thank Academy you. Award-winning actor Marlon Brando. Thank you for this movie. Elliot Kazan and Marlon Brando. Yeah, Elliot, you, you, knocked, solved out, you our, knocked it out of the park. Our romantic outlooks on life. And thank you, Pat Dean, for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me on the show. Do can you I... want to share anything with the audience where they can see you, what they can do? Uh, when does this come out? Yeah, in about two weeks. <laughs> okay, then I have no idea. But um, I have a couple podcasts, too. Yes. What? That's weird. Plug that. Comedians with podcasts. Comedians and cars having Happy, podcasts. Yeah, comedians and cars recording podcasts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. I do a few podcasts. Um, I do one that you've been on called "I Learned Nothing." It's about philosophy. It's true. Isn't that fun? It my, was fun. My grumpy friend Ben teaches me about philosophy, and um, I just try to make him mad yeah. the whole time. And they shit on Baltimore accents on that the too. entire time. Yeah. And then the other, you know what? The other fucking podcast I do, we also shit on Maryland accents. Uh, it's called the Lanalax Corporation. It's a very mysterious thing. It's a hypothetical choose your own adventure podcast uh, that takes place in a universe that wants to ruin your life. We record it every Friday night at two in the morning. I <laughs> swear a, to God, it's super awesome. It's fun. I love yeah, it. It's, it's crazy. It's not for everyone. The, the people who like it like it a lot, and then there's people who are, who are go. Like, where I go, hey, did you get a chance to listen to that? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah I checked it out. And you just go, ooh, never, um, never mind. Yeah. Check, well, please. I'm in a different position because everybody feels pretty lukewarm to this podcast. Like, <laughs> so I don't have to really deal with yeah. the ups and the downs, so that's well, nice. Life is nothing if, if not ups and downs. Hey, uh, go get a drink for Pat every uh, Friday and Saturday night at the Bellevue Room. And Thursday. And Come Thursday. Open mic. Come Thursday, by Friday, open Saturday. mic night. It's like one of the most fun nights. It's just, it's, it's just crazy. Bellevue Room in Austin, Texas. Best comedy venue. If oh. you're ever in Austin, go see a show there. Please. I'm begging you. He's, he really is. He's on his knees. I'm literally on my broken knees. It's very unnecessary. Blood everywhere. And yeah. there's going to be a lot of explanations. That's okay. I'll make the kids mop it up. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Goodbye forever.